Hello everyone, my name is Dave Giblin and I lead the consulting arm of Genesis here in APAC. I want to thank our friends and partners at Continuous Technologies and the Hong Kong Contact Centre Association for giving me the opportunity to speak to you again. Before I begin, I hope you, your family and your colleagues are safe and well during these extraordinary times. Whilst I wish we could all be together again like last year in Hong Kong, today I am speaking to you from my home in Singapore. And in order to film this broadcast, I have asked one of my best friends to help me, and we are following safe distancing guidelines as well as safe management practices to bring this to you. Now, at Genesis, we would like to thank all our healthcare professionals and emergency services teams for continuing to keep us all safe and healthy. But also, we would like to thank you, our passionate contact center and customer experience teams who throughout all this have helped keep our countries, businesses and our region moving forward. Now, these are really unprecedented times and this year has been one year that really nobody could have predicted, though many movies have tried. Organizations are now operating in the toughest global macroeconomic conditions that we have seen in a generation. And with that, customer experience, trust, loyalty, it is as important as it ever has been. So I want to take the next 20 minutes to talk to you about where do we go from here in terms of customer experience? What is it that will really tip the balance in this new world that we live in? Now, if we take a look at our industry over the last 20 years, it went through two big evolutions. The first evolution was about efficiency, delivering separated, isolated moments. In fact, 20 years ago, we never called it experience back then. We called it customer service. Customer service was for many organizations, the cost center. It was a unit that people didn't really understand or appreciate unless you were in it. And more often than not, it is the main face of a brand. For agents, like it still is today, it was for a fun experience, but it was also really tough. You had to log into 10, 15 different systems to be able to figure out who they were speaking to. And with four to six weeks of training, policies, processes changing every month, you did your best to help the customer, but the tools you had were very limited. For customers, they'll remember the long queue times, I think we all do, with pretty bad hold music. Some customers would just be disconnected in an effort to protect service level KPIs. But this was the norm across the industry. The technology, incredible voice technologies at that time, only allowed us to treat people like numbers. Everyone was really a service ticket. We then moved to the second evolution, and that was around effectiveness. So, as you added more channels and more ways to engage, the birth of the multi-channel and omni-channel contact centers were born. And with that came the beginnings of real analytics to help you be more efficient with your wait times, your call handling, and your IVR routing. This was all really about driving the reach of people. And in fact, we treated those people as either promoters or detractors, often through their NPS or customer satisfaction scores. And also companies launched hundreds of bots and they didn't really understand the context of the inquiry because the technology at that time simply didn't allow it. Many agents still had multiple systems to access, a chat system, email, and voice. For customers, each journey was always new and yet so very different from the last. It wasn't until what, early 2020 that the word customer experience started to be used more frequently and actually mean something. So over those two evolutions, we all measured contact center performance with efficiency and effectiveness in mind. And it was with the aim to get it done quickly and get it done well. And yes, efficiency and effectiveness are critical components to managing customer experience. But it would be fair to say that something has been lost in that goal. We lost the importance of connecting customers and employees emotionally to a company or brand. Now, you will have seen efficiency and effectiveness when left unchecked can erode human connection, humanity, feeling, that connectedness, something that in these times that we live in now are more important than they ever have been before. Now, whilst we have seen brands getting better at personalizing specific engagements for individuals, most are still challenged to connect 
the full journeys of customers and employees because their data is siloed within specific channels, systems, and departments. More often than not, people still need to identify themselves when they contact a company. They repeat who they are and why they need service, not just once, but often to every employee or bot they are passed to and before they can get to the resolution they seek. Their history doesn't follow them as they move between voice and digital engagement channels. And this problem exists because the technologies behind these interactions are disconnected. And with efficiency and effectiveness, one vital component is missing. And that brings us to the evolution that really is the force multiplier that organizations are starting to embrace and move towards. That is empathy. Empathy is the ability to internalize and respond to the circumstances and emotions of others. It is the action of understanding, being aware of, being sensitive to, and vicariously experiencing the feelings, thoughts, and experiences of others. When organizations lead with empathy during each engagement, they are able to build trust with customers and forge more meaningful, long-term relationships. Now, in order to truly understand each customer and show them empathy, organizations must gain an holistic view, which can only be achieved by connecting and integrating data across systems. We are at the point where differentiated, tailor-made experiences are possible because technologies like Genesis, whether it's cloud, AI, and engagement channels, are at the cutting edge, and more so now than ever, easy for organizations to adopt and deploy everywhere. So the future world that we need to head towards is one that combines efficiency, effectiveness, and empathy. And it's called Experience as a Service. Now follow me, and I'm gonna tell you a little bit more about Experience as a Service. This is highly compelling. So for Hong Kong, what does this really mean for customers and businesses alike? Well, it's delivered through personalized interactions that start with your individual customers, right at the center, which is powered by an understanding of their unique needs, their intent, and their personal preferences. See, when you create engagements based on empathy, customers feel remembered. They feel heard and understood. This is how you forge stronger connections, earn your customers' trust, and build loyalty. And in the end, you'll see better business results. In fact, a study in the Harvard Business Review earlier this year showed that loyalty leadership grew revenues two and a half times as fast as industry peers. Two and a half times as fast. Wow. So to achieve personalized customer experiences at scale, you need the right technology and tools in place. Now, at a high level, it comes down to three components. Data, artificial intelligence, and powerful engagement tools. You need customer employee data to gather and understand. After all, to show true empathy, to make customers feel known and understood, you need to know something about them. The same is true for your agents to foster employee engagement. You need to know about them and about their work, their strengths, skills, and capabilities. And with all the applications out there, the best automation in the world is worth nothing if it cannot draw upon historical third-party and behavioral data. Your contact center, marketing, and sales teams are a goldmine for this data, but it can only reach its full potential when it's unified across siloed systems, both in and out of house. In fact, at Genesis, we founded a global initiative together with Salesforce and others called the Cloud Information Model. At its heart, it is there to accelerate digital transformation and deliver a standards-based solution for connecting data across multiple cloud and on-premise products. In fact, today, Genesis integrates to more than 50 different CRMs from around the world, and with applications too from our friends at Adobe, Google, Microsoft, and Zoom. So, as you start to unify these different data sources and different digital interactions, information will pour in faster than ever before, and your data lake grows. But so does the challenge of making sense of it all. So how do you actually do something with it? Well, that's where artificial intelligence comes in. 
AI helps us personalize experiences at a scale by making sense of these massive amounts of data to anticipate, predict, and customize people's experiences. Enable us to understand conversations across engagement channels and across marketing, sales, and service. Doing things like providing agents real-time details and insights that enable them to be empathetic. Now, AI interprets, predicts, and recommends the next optimal option based on your customers' preferences and your business goals. Like proactively matching customers to agents based on the finest details for a successful interaction. AI also works in the background to help automate decisions about when to reach out and intervene to a customer and the right way to do so, or when to let the customer carry on the path they've started. It understands when to automate interactions with a bot, when to route them to an agent, when to coach that agent for better results, even when to schedule that agent to begin with using over 70 different forecasting algorithms in the blink of an eye. And we have a fighter jet flying overhead. Now, AI is not only useful, but critical to creating opportunities for truly personalized engagements. It removes time-consuming transactional tasks that pull reps' attention from the important interactions that really require a human connection. Now, one of the reasons why personalization is so important is that this is happening to consumers every day. Think about it for yourself. Think about how you shop and what groceries you buy, how you exercise and keep fit. Even the way you consume content, be it on Netflix, YouTube, or Apple TV. No longer are we just a number, we are individuals. Now, in those moments of truth, those magic engagements between your customer and your brand, everything must come together, unified across marketing, sales, and service. Now you have the data to make your customers feel known and remembered. You have the AI-empowered insights to make their intent and needs heard. Now is the time to make customers feel understood with the help of engagement tools that set your team up to provide experiences rooted in empathy. So this means greeting customers at the right point in their journey, not just on the communication channel they prefer, but in a way that suits the device they're using by knowing where customers have been and where they are going. Just like chatting with an old friend, customers feel like they are picking up the conversation right where they left off. And regardless of the channel, each new interaction with an organization should build upon the one that came before it. Now, whether the customer is working with an employee or using a self-service technology, each engagement draws upon their individual history and preferences as well as real-time insights. This enables the organizations to best address the issue at hand and predict what may be needed next before the customer even knows themselves. Now, customers will feel like they are your organization's priority, cared for as individuals and uniquely understood. They won't have to repeat themselves. Their intent will be clear that issues will be resolved quickly, fully, and with compassion. Let's take these two simple use cases. Imagine if a customer needs to reset a password. They don't want to wait in a long IVR queue to talk to an agent. They just want it changed. A company that leads with empathy understands the customer simply wants this task completed quickly and painlessly. So it uses customer data in an intelligent chatbot to reset the password in a matter of seconds. But when it comes to more complex or emotional situations, such as a customer reporting a car accident to an insurance company, the organization prioritizes their inquiry, routing the individual straight to a human whose first step is to ask, I understand you've been in an accident. Are you okay? Now, I know this technology might seem far-fetched, a vision, a dream. Many people would think these are four or five different decisions you're gonna to have to make. You know, how do I go to the cloud as a company? How do I participate in the digital transformation? How do I go and do more AI as a company? Well, today I'm telling you that these are not multiple different decisions that you have to make. There is just one decision. 
And that answer is Genesis. You see, at Genesis, we are making experiences of service a reality today by helping organizations like you leverage the right combination of technologies so you can show each customer empathy while delivering efficient and effective services at scale. This is really a time for us all to come together to set course on this new chapter of experience as a service. Power engagements with efficiency, effectiveness and empathy. It has been a pleasure to speak with you today, even though virtually, which means I can be anywhere. A magic on television, right? Now, though we aren't together, let's try and keep these moments that we've got, these connections, stronger than ever before. And so it leads me to say to you, please be safe and well. Thank you for your time and have an amazing Hong Kong summit. Goodbye.